الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We continue إن شاء الله تعالى with the fiqh and uh, we finished كتاب الزكاة the chapter of الزكاة and we start إن شاء الله تعالى with the next chapter which is الصيام الصوم fasting and uh, ما شاء الله يعني hopefully we will get a, a good review إن شاء الله to all what has been studied before and when it comes to the ilm matters of knowledge is like the Quran what happens when you memorize something of the Quran do you memorize it one time in your lifetime and just you leave it or you have to keep on reviewing it you have to review it this is part of the blessings of studying the ilm that you become obligated to preserve the knowledge in yourself it's an obligation and it's a bad sign for someone to gain knowledge and then allow himself to lose it. So it becomes a wird. Like awrad, every Muslim has wird, and awrad is the plural for everything. You have a wird of the Quran on a daily basis. Recitation, you, you start and you end. If you memorize the Quran, you have to keep on reviewing it every day, a portion till you finish it and you start over again. Any hadith that you memorized, you have to have a wird to it that you keep on revisiting it and reviewing it. And the same thing with ilm. The ilm, nobody can ever imagine that you would study it one time and that's the end of it. And the blessings of it, that the more that you review it, not just that it would be more the same meaning established, no. Open for the person ways and gates and blessings of knowledge that he did not have before. Even though we're still in the entry level, if it's correct to say, but the ilm has so much barakah, it's not to be compared with uh, any other type of knowledge. So this is, as we agreed, we need to go always revisit the very first week when we talked about the manners and the etiquettes. Al-ilm ibadah. Talab al-ilm ibadah. Seeking knowledge is ibadah. This is an act of ibadah. And also applying the hadith that we heard, especially the time that we live in, to seek that knowledge is like hijrah to the Prophet والسلام, when a person is seeking the knowledge and not being distracted by what people are distracted with. So that's why the importance of constantly reviewing and constantly going back and, and, and going over things, inshallah. And that's why it, it never ends uh, till the end of one's life. So uh, we'll start, inshallah ta'ala, uh, briefly with the chapter of As-Sawm. And if you have any questions or so at the end, we can go through that, inshallah. So As-Sawm, this is the fourth pillar of Al-Islam one of the pillars of Islam, and he starts with Sawm uh, Ramadan. When we talk about Sawm in the books of Fiqh, the first thing that is mentioned is Sawm Ramadan, of course, because that's the obligation. Same thing with the Tahara, the same thing with the Salah. Even though the same ruling applies for the optional act of fasting, optional act of Salah, but the most important thing is the obligation comes first, and then afterwards, the recommended acts will be mentioned. So, uh, First of all, what is the ta'rif? What is the definition of a sawm? And by now we have this habit of uh, the terminologies of every ilm, of every knowledge. We need to uh, dubt, we need to master it, we need to know it according to that ilm, not according to what we think. Uh, so what's the definition of a sawm from the fiqh perspective? And as any of these terminologies has two uh, types of terminology or definitions, Lughatan wa shara'an, linguistically and religiously. What is the meaning of a sawm? Lughatan, al imsak. One word. A sawm means al imsak. Al imsak is to withhold, to stay away from something. Uh, so, uh, so this is what basically a sawm means to to have imsak or to stay away from whatever comes in the shara. And that's why the shara. Definition of it, al-imsaku, same word is used, biniyat al ta'abbud, with the niya of al-ibadah, uh, an al-akli, wa shurbi, wa ghashayan al-nisa, wa sa'il al-muftarati min turu al-fajri ila gharub al-shams. To stay away, to withhold oneself with the intention of ibadah from food and drink and ghashayan al-nisa, to be close, to be having the intimate relationship with women and the rest of the muftarat and the rest of what breaks the fast from the beginning, the break of dawn till sunrise. 
This is a more detailed of a definition, but you can make it uh, the last statement, make it more general by saying, because this uh, definition, just remember three points to it. So when you're asked what is the definition of fasting, remember three things. Al-imsak, to, to withhold, to stay away from. Biniyat uh, al-ta'abud, the niyyah of al-ta'abud, because not any imsak is valid. If someone doesn't eat and drink and doesn't break his fast from Fajr to Maghrib, but he did not have any intention of fasting. It's just it happened that way. Does that consider fasting? No. So al-imsak, this is the physical action, with the intention of a ta'abud. Al-imsak from what? An al-muftarat. Anything that breaks the fast. How do we know the muftarat? From the shah, from the deen. So that can come later with details. So that's why he only mentioned the, the major three things that breaks the fast in the definition, eating and drinking and the relationship between men and women. And then, but he's still, that's not enough. There are other things that can break the fast. So that's why in the definition he included وسائر المفترات and the rest of the things that breaks the fast. From the time, the time from من طلوع الفجر إلى غروب الشمس. So you have imsak with the intention of التعبد worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the time of it from fajr till maghrib. From break of fajr till sunset. Clear? So as you see from the definition itself, it talks about an imsak, talks about the intentions. And it talks about the time. So the fasting is from uh, in a specific time. Clear? Uh, there are a few points here. We don't have to spend uh, so much uh, time talking about it because it's not really related to matters of fiqh, but it's, it's good to be mentioned. Like the history behind the obligation of fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated this upon the ummah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam like the nations before. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. It's been prescribed upon you the same way it was been prescribed upon the nations before you. La'allakum tattaqoon for you to attain the taqwa of Allah. It says that it was in the month of Sha'ban, the second year after the hijrah. The month of Sha'ban, the second year after the hijrah. Uh, some of Ramadan become, became an obligation. This is again, and the, it's not related to the fiqh subject of it. And the same thing with regards to the essence of fasting, the benefits of fasting, the wisdom behind it, the great benefits, and all these types of things. It's definitely important, but not in the fiqh perspective. And that's why he mentioned some of the benefits of fasting, whether it's spiritually or uh, socially, and even health-wise, uh, there's nothing wrong with talking about benefits, right? But that's not why we're fasting or why we fast. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us. So if someone fasts for health reason without the intention of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't count as fasting. So spiritual benefits, as he says, uh, gives you the training of being patient, give you strength of being patient, to teach you how to control oneself, to discipline oneself. Uh, and وَيُوجَدُ uh, فِي النَّفْسِ مَلَكَةَ التَّقْوَى and it brings the taqwa in oneself and you, uh, you grow that you grow that uh, level of taqwa in one's heart and great benefits when it comes to fasting uh, which is, is needed to establish the purpose of our life and the social benefits that it uh, gets the ummah to be used to uh, be disciplined and to be united and to love justice and equality among the people be given the poor and the mercy and uh, ihsan and goodness and protects the societies from evil and things like this and also uh, physically cleans your stomach and all kinds of things from so all kinds of things that is mentioned there uh, now that's the next point that we need to pay attention to thubut shahr ramadan when do we get to know that Ramadan starts? يَثْبُتُ دُخُولُ رَمَضَانَ بِأَحَدِ أَمْرَيْنِ We're studying fiqh, right? So the mas'ala here, how does Ramadan start? Ramadan starts by one of two things. Ramadan starts by one of two things. The first one, كَمَالُ الشَّهْرِ السَّابِقِ عَنْهُ The completion of the month that is before it, which is the month of Sha'ban. So فَإِذَا تَمَّ لِشَعْبَانِ ثَلَثُونَ يَوْمًا if Sha'ban is 30 days, then the next day, which is 31st, there's no 31st. The next day becomes for sure, no doubt, 
it's the beginning of Ramadan. No one would say, well, but we didn't see the, the moon. There's no 31st, there's no 31 days in the lunar month. Right? So this is by necessity. The next day is Ramadan because already 30 days of Sha'ban. Okay, so this is the first way to establish the beginning of the month of Ramadan that Sha'ban finishes 30 days. The second thing is Ru'yatu Hilalihi to see the Hilal. To see the Hilal. The Hilal is the moon, but the Hilal is specifically the crescent, which is how the moon looks in the beginning of the month when it's just born. When do we see the Hilal? When do, when do we see the moon, or people try to see the moon, the night of the 30th of Sha'ban. And as we all know that the night comes before the day. So when you say the night of the 30th of Sha'ban, that means what? That means you already finished the 29th day of Sha'ban, and Maghrib time comes. What is this night is called? It's not the night of the 29th, it's the night of the day after. So it's the night of the 30th of Sha'ban. So once the sun sets, we are in the next day by the night. We're in the next night, the next calendar night, right? So this is at all times. You can even say that with any other calendar. So what, what night are we in today? The night of, what's tomorrow? Wednesday, the night of Wednesday. Already Wednesday started as far as the night is concerned. So this is, this is the night of the next day. So to see the, the moon in the night of the 30th of Sha'ban. Then once, and we'll talk about how, to be, how to, for that to be seen, but once the Hilal is seen, then Ramadan started. Once they see the Hilal, so then that night becomes the first night of Ramadan. So there's Taraweeh prayer and everything. So this is the first night of Ramadan, and then the next day becomes an obligation for people to fest. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ Whoever witness among you the month, then let him fast it. مَنْ شَهِدَ شَهِدَ that means witnessed. How do you witness the month? How, what, what, is it, what does it mean to witness the month of Ramadan? Is to see the moon or the 30 days of Shaban is established. So the evidence فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمُ الشَّهْرَ فَلْيَصُمْ In Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 185, and the second evidence is the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, If you see the hilal, the crescent, then fast. فأفطروا, and if you see the moon, the crescent, then break your fast. Meaning at the end of the month. You see it in the beginning, then you fast. You see it at the end, then the, that's the end of the month. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ فَأَكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ ثَلَاثِينَ يوم. فَإِنْ غُمَّ عَلَيْكُمْ That means... Al-Ghamam is the clouds. So if it's cloudy for you, you can't see the moon, فَأَكْمِلُوا Then complete al idda the count, 30 days. If you can't see the moon, then Shaban is 30 days. Do you have to see the moon again? No, because Shaban is 30 days. That means by default, by necessity, the next day is the first of Ramadan. And the same thing at the end of Ramadan. You go see the Hilal at the night of the 30th of Ramadan. You saw the Hilal, the next day is Eid. You didn't see the Hilal, then Ramadan is 30 days, and then the next day will become the Eid. Uh, We're not going into the differences of, of opinions in this. We're just taking that, the meaning again of how the month starts. And the Masail, what if people saw the Hilal on the night of the 29th? You know, what should they do? That means they fasted 28 days, right? And Maghrib time, they saw the Hilal. Can the month be 28? No. The month is either 29 or 30. As the Prophet والسلام, stated, al month al shahr wa hakadha wa hakadha. And he pointed three times with his hands. 30 and one with one less. That means it's either 29 or 30. It cannot be 28. It cannot be 31. But what if they see the Hilal at the night of the 29th? That means they fasted only 28 days and they saw the Hilal. So what's the ruling? What's the hukm? Still fast 29? Any other opinion? They missed one. So the next day is what? It's Eid. The next day is Eid. Because the Hilal is seen. That means that's the, that's the bayina. This is the evidence that now we are in Shawwal. So what happens? You fast. The, you, it's haram to fast the first day of Eid. 
So the next day is the beginning of Shawwal. But what do they do? 28 days only? Then they make up a day afterwards. That happened in the time of Umar. It's easy. It's not haram. It's not breaking the rules of the deen. This is following the way the Prophet ﷺ. So again, but we're talking here about again either 30 days or seeing the Hilal of uh, Shawwal. Uh, <clears throat> he mentioned this masala is clear when the Thubut is shah, when does the month starts. The next masala, uh, sometimes you would mention some of the, some of the masala, not all of it. If people in a country they saw the hilal, then fasting is obligatory upon them. Uh, this is refers to the matali'a. So the matali' matali' means where the hilal can be seen or can be born, it's different from different places. So matla'u al-hilal fi Asia, غير matali'a, غير matla'u fi Europa, matla'u fi Africa, غير matla'u fi America. So he mentioned Asia, Europe, America. So for every place, they have their own separate rulings. Right? So that means... اختلاف المطالع or عدم اختلاف المطالع if people fast differently in different parts of the world that's fine basically this is what is being said وإن صام المسلمون جميعا and if all of the muslimin they fast with one رؤية with one sight of the hilal فهذا من محاسن الإسلام this is from the good things for Muslims to be united and brotherhood and so on right but it's so the, what's the مسألة here مطالع الهلال does, does the Hilal has only one sighting that is mandatory for everybody to follow? Or each place has their own way of sighting the moon and they don't have to follow others? This is a mas'ala. There's valid differences of opinions in it. And it happened at the time of the Sahaba radiallahu and they approved uh, each one according to their uh, moon sighting. as the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas and others. When uh, came from Sham, they fasted the day before and they fasted the day after. Fine. Well, because each one they saw the hilal. Uh, sophistications and communications and all of that does not change anything in the religion. So if people get to do it, mashallah, nobody is to say, but now we have, we have no excuse. No, there's no such a thing. You can't say that. Because it's already, even from the very beginning, it was a valid issue. It was a valid issue. Of course, it's best that if it's seen, then everybody would uh, fast together. Uh, but uh, this is not a must. But again, keep it on the side like this, and this can go on with the matters of uh, of research. But the majority of the ulama, the jumhur of Ahl al-ilm, that uh, if one uh, town or one country, whatever they saw the hilal, then all of the Muslims is obligatory upon them to fast with them, as long as they share part of the day or part of the night. So uh, practicality, this is something else. So we talked about the thubut of the month and the matali' of al-hilal, uh, where the hilal uh, is to be seen. Uh, that's also something to be mentioned. And we'll take that if it's seen, then everybody should fast, inshallah ta'ala, and this is what is best. The next mas'ala, what is sufficient for the moon sighting? Is it the entire ummah they have to see the hilal or one or two or five or which one? He says, He says here that it's enough for one trustworthy person to see the hilal of the month of Ramadan or two. Uh, because the Prophet ﷺ approved the moon sighting of one person. You know, one person was sufficient as the, the hadith in Sahih Muslim. A man came and he said, Oh Prophet of Allah, I saw the hilal. And the Prophet ﷺ took his witnessing of the hilal and the, everybody fasted as a result of that. One man did not interrogate him, did not, you know, try to prove that he's a liar. He just took his witness and everybody fasted. This is for the beginning of the month of Ramadan. Shahadat one man is sufficient. Right? Uh, and it doesn't have to be a man. No. No, doesn't matter. Yeah, no. So someone that is trustworthy. As for the month, as for the ru'ya of Shawwal, the end of the month of Ramadan, 
which is the moon of Shawwal, it has to be two. It has to be trustworthy, uh, but two men, uh, two people uh, instead of one. Uh, and not one. Because to, to, to end the month, it's, it's tougher than to begin the month. Right? So you're already fasting. So the ruling is that you're fasting. So you don't want to miss a day of Ramadan. But to, to be at ease with starting the month, uh, this is uh, the wisdom behind it. Uh, so one in the beginning of the month, two at the end of the month. Because this is also as the hadith in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet ﷺ did not approve the witness of one, but two at the end of the month uh, of Ramadan. Then after that, wujubu sawmi Ramadan, the obligation of fasting of the month of Ramadan. Of course, it's wajib, and we talked about the word wajib and fard. Here, it's the same thing. It's not like a lesser level of an obligation. That means it's an obligation. It's one of the pillars of Islam in the Quran and the Sunnah and the consensus of the Ummah. Of course, one of the pillars of Islam. Shah Ramadan, الذي أنزل في القرآن. هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى والفقهان فمن شهد منكم الشهر فليصم and the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said in the hadith that we memorized بني الإسلام على خمس Islam is established upon five pillars one of which is وصوم رمضان uh, clear so this is the ruling of it ما حكم صيام شهر رمضان for it's واجب for those who are able to fast ما هي أركان الصوم what are the pillars of fasting we mentioned it in the definition so, Arkanu Saw, pillars. We talked about pillars before. It means no way out. You have to come up with the pillars. You cannot miss a pillar of the ibadah. You have to have the pillars. A niya, first one is a niya, which is the determination of the heart that you're fasting. So, uh, the niya of fasting, which is the niya of ibadah, that this is a ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna mal a'malu bin niyat. The second uh, pillar, al-imsak to withhold from breaking the fast with all what that means anything that breaks the fast and he mentioned the third one which is at the man the time which is the entire day from the break of fajr till sunset which is the three things that are mentioned in the tarif or the definition so the niya and the imsak and some only mention the two pillars and niya wal imsak the intention and al imsak is to withhold from breaking the fast and the time, of course, it's, uh, it's obvious, from break of Fajr till sunrise. Uh, we didn't talk about the, the niyyah from what time, or the one is sufficient for the entire month or every day. This is to be mentioned later, inshallah. So, clear the pillars of fasting and niyyah, al imsak to withhold, and as the man from break of Fajr till sunset. Uh, the second point, a shurut, the conditions for the fasting to become an obligation. Shurut al wujub. What is the shurut of al wujub? That means if these conditions are there, then it's an obligation upon the person to fast. And that's different than shurut al siha. There are conditions, if it's met, fasting is valid, but it's not an obligation upon the person. Versus conditions, that if it's there, then it's an obligatory upon the person to fast. You see the difference? We'll see the difference here in one of the conditions or so. Shurut al wujub, four. The shurut of obligations. Al Islam, a person is a Muslim. Uh, al Bulur, to uh, be at the age of puberty. So that means if someone that is seven years old, if he fasts, uh, which is a tamiz. A tamiz is to be able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong. A tamiz, shart wujub or shart sahha? Is it a condition for an obligation or a condition for validity? Tamiz is to be seven years old. Validity. That means if he fast, his fasting is valid. He gets reward for it. His parents get rewards for it. Right? But is it an obligation upon him? No. So what is the age-wise that becomes a condition for obligation? Al-Bulugh. Al-Bulugh is puberty. 
اوكي سو الاسلام نمبر 2 البلوغ بيبرتي نمبر 3 العقل someone with uh, someone that is sane uh, which is a condition for all of the ibadah to be as an obligation a person has to be sane and number four al-qudra ala al-siyam this is unique for fasting which means the ability for a person to fast if he has the ability that means fasting is an obligation if he doesn't have the ability it's not sharat wujub but if he fast it's valid Okay, if he fast anyway, the fasting is valid, but it's not an obligation upon him. So, Al-Qudra ala al-Sawm. So, remember the fourth one. So, you have Al-Islam, Al-Bulugh, Al-Aql, Al-Qudra, the ability to fast. And he says, وَيُشْتَرَطُ فِي صِحَّةِ صَوْمِ الْمَرَأَ أَنْ تَكُونَ طَاهِرًا مِنْ حَيْدٍ أَوْ نُفَاسٍ It's a condition for the validity of the fasting of a woman that she is clean from menses or after birth bleeding. So, uh, which is, يعني, if she's in menses or after birth bleeding, that means she has to make up the day because the psalm is not valid. And that's why he says, شروط صحة الصوم. I'm not sure why this is mentioned here when the conditions of the validity is mentioned right after. So, شروط الوجوب four, the شروط of obliga- obligation is four, Islam, puberty, بلوغ, عقل, to be seen and number four, the ability to fast. Clear? We'll take the shurut al-sihha and then we'll take the hadith, inshallah. Shurut al-sihha, there are six. Six conditions for fasting to be valid. Sahih. Sihha, that means it's valid. Might not be an obligation. Some of these conditions will be present in both. Al-Islam. So if a takafir, fasting uh, is not valid for him unless he's a Muslim. But is it obligatory upon him? Yes, but he has to be a Muslim first. Okay, so Al-Islam. Uh, and what's mentioned before Al-Aql. So Al-Aql also. So this is easy for both, which is sane, to be sane, Al-Aql. And instead of al bulugh in the obligations, we'll have what here in the Sahha? Tamiz. Tamiz is the age of uh, what's what's a good word? One word for tamiz, huh? Discernment. Discernment, right? That means a child. He's still a child, but he's aware that there's something called fasting. Gets reward for it. It's an obligation, like this, which is usually around seven years old. So a tamiz, and not al bulu. Uh, and then, so these three are the same. Uh, I'm sorry. Two are the same from the obligation, which is al-Islam al-Aql. And then here at Tamiz, which is different than al-Bulur. Then what's uh, different also from the wujub is you have al-Niyya min al-Layl. Al-Niyya min al-Layl. Al-Niyya, we said that it's a pillar. Correct? I hope it's clear, it's not confusing. When we talked about pillars of fasting, we said three things. Al-Niyya and al-Imsak, to withhold from breaking the fast, and the time from breaking from the break of Fajr to sunrise, sunset, correct? Here, from the conditions of the validity of fasting, to to make intentions during the night, before Fajr. So, for Ramadan, can you make intention to fast in Ramadan after Fajr? No, it has to be before Fajr. So, that means if someone got the, made the intention of fasting in the month of Ramadan during the day, the fasting is not valid because it was supposed to be during the night. How can someone do this? Someone is a traveler, so he has the excuse of breaking his fast, so he has no intentions to fast. Correct? Or sick, and he decided not to fast. Then when it's in the morning time, he says, what's wrong with fasting? Let me fast, it's easier. Everybody's fasting. It's too late. He has to make up that day because he did not make the intention during the night. That's only for the obligatory fasting. Optional fasting, that's fine. As long as he didn't eat and drink from Fajr. So that's why min al-layl, intention during the night is shartu sihha. I know it's going to be confusing, but we need to memorize it. We need to look at it and we need to think of it so that you comprehend it well, 
Because, for example, when you're asked in the exam, which one is shart saha and which one is shart wujub? Is it a condition of obligation or it's a condition of validity? Right? So if someone, the name in the light, the intention during the night, this is a, a condition that is an, as an obligation or a condition of validity, condition of validity. Right? So that the niyyah is during the night. Uh, even though with Ramadan, you know, it's uh, the niyyah of the night is an obligation, of course, for the niyyah to be there. So we won't uh, include this in the exam. So a tamiz uh, is the same thing as we talked about it. Inqita'u dami al-hayt wa inqita'u dami al-nufas. And we have to be very precise. Inqita'u, the end, termination, termination of the blood of the menses. Did not say anything about taking a shower or anything. Determination. So if a woman, uh, the blood of the menses is terminated, she, she's clean from the blood of the menses, that means before Fajr, before Fajr and Ramadan, uh, that means she has to fast the next day, of course. Uh, otherwise, fasting is not valid. And the same thing with the termination of the blood of the afterbirth bleeding. Okay, so even if she didn't take the shower after the menses, as long as the blood is, she's clean from the blood. So we have six, al-Islam, al-Aql, and al-Tamiz, intention from the night, the termination of the blood of the menses and the termination of the blood of after birth bleeding. Is that clear? Any questions? Um, no, because they talk about the, uh, uh, the condition. The, the question was, with, for Salah, we said that one of the conditions of Salah is the whole waqt. The beginning of the time of the salah. But for Ramadan, it's assumed already that it's there because it's not something that is keep on happening. It's uh, which is of course it's uh, it's a condition because it's but it's we're talking about shurut as siyam Ramadan. So assuming that Ramadan already started, not shurut as siyam in general. So that's why it's not mentioned as a condition because Ramadan is already there. Does it make sense now? Like, uh, let's take the, the hadith, inshallah, there's no question. So we talked about the pillars, three things, shurut al-wujub four, and shurut al sahha there are six mentioned here. No, the, with the sahha, as we said, the, even though they're very close, but uh, the shart al-wujub, that means once the condition is met, it's an obligation to fast. Versus once the condition is met, it's valid to fast. So a tamiz is, is uh, less than the age of puberty. If a, if a child is mumayiz, that means he's able to differentiate, to know things. Uh, that means if he fasts, it's valid from him because he's mumayyiz. But if he doesn't fast, it's not an obligation because this is not an obligatory condition because he's not yet in the age of puberty. So it's not an, an, it's not wajib upon him. It's only sahih from him. Like the hajj, for example. If a child makes hajj, his hajj is valid, but it's not an obligation upon him. So that's the, the issue between validity and obligation. So every, not every uh, wajib, right, is is uh, is valid, and, not, and vice versa. So it has to be, you know, some things are are valid, but it's not an obligation. Uh, and of course, if it's an obligation, that means it has to be valid. So I guess it's, if everything is wajib, that means it's also valid, but it's not complete yet. So for example, al-bulugh 
شرط وجوب بلوغ to reach the age of puberty this is a condition of, a, of an obligation so if he's بالغ and he fast his fast is valid but it's not complete meaning it does not give you all the sense of what's valid because a person less than the age of puberty he still can fast and his fast is valid but it's not an obligation upon him right It's not necessarily the next level of of uh, of anything. No, it's a, it's just a, a way to defeat, to include some of the things. Like the issue, usually it's mentioned. The main thing that comes up is the issue of puberty. Uh, so it's it's a very obvious condition. So if it's less than age of puberty, the if a, if a child fast fast is valid, but it's not an obligation. No. Same thing with prayer, yes. But then for the child, it's if he's mumayiz for the prayer, then it's an obligation upon the parents to make sure that he prays. Not an obligation upon the child. So the parents is I see someone is smiling. <laughs> so so it's an obligation upon the, the, the parent and upon, so the parent will make it as an obligation upon the child. No. But the hadith is 121. It's a long hadith. Uh, but it's an important one. Uh, usually in the subject of Al-Qadr. And we'll, uh, we'll say it briefly, inshallah. Uh, and uh, we'll mention some just very brief meaning of it, inshallah. 121. Is everybody there? You have it open? I repeat after me, inshallah. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiyallahu an, قال, حدثنا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهو الصادق المصدوق إن أحدكم يجمع خلقه في بطن أمه أربعين يوما نطفة ثم يكون علاقة مثل ذلك ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك ثم يرسل الله إليه الملك فينفخ فيه الروح ويؤمر بأربع كلمات بكتب رزقه وعمله وأجله وشقي أو سعيد فوالله الذي لا إله غيره إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها وإن أحدكم ليعمل بعمل أهل النار حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع فيسبق 
عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة فيدخلها رواه البخاري ومسلم The hadith memorization wise it might look long but it's very easy the words are repeated uh, but it's not going to be as an obligation of fasting uh, obligation of memorization but we need to know the meaning of it inshallah so we didn't take this hadith right let me take it this is there's a title for this hadith so you need to remember the title of the hadith some hadith has titles some verses of the Quran has titles like Ayatul Kursi is the title of the ayah. So there's a title for this hadith, which is Abdullah al Mas'ud said, As Sadiq al Mazduq. This is Hadith al Sadiq al Mazduq. The hadith of a Sadiq al Mazduq. So when someone says the hadith of a Sadiq al Mazduq, what is it? This hadith. Because Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, radiallahu anhu, he mentioned this unique for this hadith, even though the Prophet is a Sadiq al Mazduq. He's the most truthful one. And the wahi revelation from Allah established this truthfulness. That's the meaning of a sadiq al masduq He's sadiq in himself. And the wahi, the revelation from Allah, established the truthfulness of the Prophet But why he mentioned this is in the hadith here? Because the meaning of the hadith, of the hadith here is something that you know people have to have certainty and belief because it's a matter of unseen and they have to have the belief in it. It's not something that they will be convinced uh, to understand it or so. Uh, what the hadith basically, the, the literal meaning of the hadith, inna ahadakum, and it's good also to learn the language if you, at least if you repeat it many times, and you see how the sequence of the words is, 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 is beautiful, inshallah. Inna ahadakum, indeed one of you, each one of you, ahadakum, yujma'u khalquhu. Yujma' that means yudam, it's being brought together. From al jamaa you know, al jamaa Masjid al jamaa bringing things together. Khalquhu, his creation. His creation is brought together. Yujma'u khalquhu, his creation is, is brought together. Fi batni ummihi, in the button, in the stomach, in the womb uh, of his mother, ummihi, arba'ina yawman nutfa. Forty days nutfa. This is the stages of the creation of the human beings that are mentioned in the Quran. The first one is nutfa, which is the the spirit nutfa. ثم يكون how many forty days in the womb of his mother. ثم يكون علاقةً ثم يكون ثم means then يكون he becomes علاقةً علاقة is the hanging thing the hanging cloth. مثل ذلك the like of it العلاقة is forty days so نطفة forty days ثم علاقة then after that, alaqa for 40 days. مثل ذلك, the like of it, instead of saying 40, 40, the like of it. ثم يكون, so ثم يكون is repeated, so it's going to the order here. ثم يكون مضغة. مضغة is the chewing thing. مضغة, something that is chewed, looks like a chew. Something chewed, like a chewing gum. ثم يكون مضغة مثل ذلك, also for the next 40 days, so three forties. So now it's 120 days. So what's the, what's the first stage? Nutfa. The second stage is alaqa. The third one is mudra, which is mentioned in Surah Al-Mu'minun and other surahs in the Quran. So this is the first three stages. Thumma, then yursilu, thumma yursilu Allahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, yursil, a risala, message. Then Allah send ilayhi to him, that child, Al-Malak. Al-Malak is the angel. Fayanfukhu fihi. Yanfukh means blow. Fayanfukhu fihi. He blow in him. Fihi. In him, al-ruh. Al-ruh is the spirit, the soul. Wa uh, yu'maru. So when is the ruh is blown? After? Three, forty days, which is? Hundred twenty days, which is? Four months. Right? So this is where life starts. فَيَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوحِ وَيُؤْمَرُ بِأَرْبَعِ كَلِمَاتِ يُؤْمَر This is in the passive tense. He will be commanded, the angel will be commanded with four words. To write four words. What are the four, four words? بِكَتْبِ To record رِزْقِهِ His provisions. All what the rizq is. Any provisions, physical and physical. 
وعمله and his actions وأجله and his أجل أجل his the, the, the life limits أجل is the limit so it's his life span how long he's going to live وشقي number four is two words شقي أو سعيد شقي is wretched ruined, perished or سعيد happy that means whether he is from the people of the hellfire or the people of Jannah these four things are written when he's in the womb of his mother his rizq his amal his actions his ajal the, the limit of his life on the earth وشقيون أو سعيد whether he is rich or happy then the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام he said فوالله الذي فوالله by Allah الذي لا إله غير the one that has no one worthy of worship except him إن أحدكم indeed one of you لا يعمل that indeed he will act لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة by the عمل by the actions of the people of Jannah حتى ما يكون بينه وبينه حتى is refers to the end till ما يكون till there is no between him بينه وبينها till there is no between him and it meaning the Jannah إلا ذراع except one arm length uh, إن أحدكم one of you لا يعمل بعمل أهل الجنة he would act the actions of the people of Jannah till ما حتى ما يكون بينه وبينه till what's between him and it meaning the Jannah only a ذراع or one arm length فيسبق عليه الكتاب الكتاب what's written will يسبق that means come ahead of him will be surpass him فيعمل بعمل أهل النار فيدخلها he would act then with the action of the people of the hellfire فيدخلها and he will enter the hellfire وإن أحدكم and one of you ليعمل بعمل أهل النار he would do the actions of the people of the fire حتى ما يكون بينه وبينها إلا ذراع the same thing is repeated till what's between him and the hellfire nothing but one arm length فيسبق عليه الكتاب what's in the kitab will come in place فيعمل بعمل أهل الجنة he would do the action of the people of the Jannah فيدخلها and he will enter the Jannah so this is the hadith with the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the writing that is written and there's some other hadith in Sahih Muslim there's a written also something to be written at, after 40 days which is all correct and it's all to establish the meaning over and over again and there is another hadith in Sahih Muslim hadith Sahal ibn Sa'ad to understand this hadith right? especially the last part of it that the hadith says uh, إن أحدكم لا يعمل بعمل أهل النار فيما يظهر للناس uh, that a person one of you would do the action of the people of Jannah in what, in what appears to the people then فيسبق عليه الكتاب فيعمل بعمل أهل النار then he would do the action of the people of the fire and he dies on it and he enters the fire. So that means what? That means the hadith it talks about what the khasisa or the evil doing in one's heart that is hidden in his lifetime and he exposes what shows to the people is the actions of the people of Jannah doing all kinds of good deeds and everything. So people think that he's one of the people of Jannah walking among them. But in his heart, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in his heart, there is evil. It's not done for the sake of Allah, for whatever reason. So then, that person, before he dies, what in his heart will be exposed with an evil action. And he would die on it and he would enter the hellfire. Even though if he dies like this, he can be from the people of the hellfire. But no, but here it shows that there's something here that happens that he would end his life in such a way that he would enter the hellfire because of what's in his heart. And the opposite also that he is doing the actions of the people of the fire, but there is something in his heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best that would make him then do the action of the people of the Jannah before he dies and then he dies and he enters the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not do any wrong or any injustice to others. This is one meaning of it to remember, which is based on the ahadith. <clears throat> the other meaning as the they say which is also correct but it also has to do with the something in the heart that is hidden a person who's not paying attention to that a person during his lifetime 
he was doing the actions of those for righteousness and everything like this. But then he slipped away. It's a valid. As long as a person is alive, anything can happen. Uh, the hearts can change between two fingers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then he changes life and then he becomes evil doer and he dies in that state. And the other side, the person lived all of his life wicked and evil and everything. And then just before he died, he repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he did the actions of the people of Jannah and he died immediately. It happened at the time of the Prophet sallallahu It happened at all times. And this second one is always a happy end of one's life. But people don't talk about the other one, which is the bad end of one's life. It's the same thing. But, but we only like the second one. But uh, what's wrong with the first one also? This is part of how life is. So uh, it's not a shock. So when someone, imagine someone, there is may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us upon the deen and so much upon the proper way and everything, but then he changed. And he continued to change and to be evil. Why this caused people to, uh, or many people that would have all kinds of issues and things like this. When the other way, they uh, they rejoice or they happy with it, which is a normal thing, of course. But it's it's what's the it's the same concept, the hearts. That Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows what's in the hearts. You know, someone is pretending, someone has a disease in his heart that he did not fix. So this is all <laughs> a call for each and every one of us to make sure that what's in the heart is according to what is being done. And if a person finds himself that he's doing the good deeds physically, but his heart is not good, what should he do? Should he quit the good deeds? Then he's basically de declaring upon himself that he's from the evil ones. No, to work on the heart, not to change the action, but to work on the hearts to make sure that the hearts are sincere and to eliminate all kinds of evil things or doubts or anything of that nature. And they believe in the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us and to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone because as you see, Everything is by Allah and the matter is unseen to us. And as the Prophet said, Do act because everyone has been made easy for him what they have been created for. Allah. Is it clear? I don't want to take too much of your time. But hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, it's clear.